Okay, maybe we can start. So thanks everyone for, for joining. Um, more people I'm sure will trickle in. Uh, I'm excited actually really myself to, to attend this because I am typically the one giving a talk on site. And so it's always nice to, to hear kind of other perspectives. And I think that's, that's really the intention we have here is to show, you know, not uh, my version of site, but to show, you know, researchers versions of site. And so we're really excited to have Magdalena uh, to give an overview uh, of site and how she uses it. Um, we first met, I think, because you you wrote into us, uh, and then you shared this slide that you made, and, and uh, I was really impressed. Uh, Magdalena is uh, a PhD student uh, working in Susana Carmona's group of neuroimaging at the Gregorio Marañón Hospital in Madrid, a uh, very beautiful city that we were just talking about. Uh, her research focuses on characterizing by neuroimaging techniques their brain remodeling in women's brains during pregnancy and postpartum periods and determining how such adapt adaptations can deviate from normality and cause mental health problems. In 2021, she was awarded a Fulbright pre-doctoral grant to complete her PhD at the uh, University of Southern California of Los Angeles. Um, and today she'll be walking through probably about a 20, 25 minute uh, overview of site. Uh, I would say, please ask questions in the chat, uh, and then we'll have plenty of time afterwards where you can ask her questions or you can ask uh, general questions of site, and I can also help answer there. Um, and so without further ado, thanks uh, again so much for your time and, and really looking forward to this presentation. Uh, and I'll turn it over to you now. Okay, thank you, Josh. Um, I'm really excited to be here today. Um, please let me know if someone has, um, is sending a message because I'm not sure um, I will see it. We'll do. Um, or anyone can just pop up and let me know if you have any question. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you how I use site, this platform, this new platform for for for, for citing, um, how I've been using it for my research. And I will walk you through some of the tools that I found um, more useful for my, for my research. So SITE um, is a 2018 startup based in New York, and it uses deep learning and natural language processing for uh, searching citations. Uh, so they introduce uh, the concept of smart citation. Um, and it makes this, uh, this citation basically allows users to see how a specific paper has cited another paper by providing the citation statement or the citation context. And then it also classifies this site as providing supporting or uh, contrasting evidence for, for that claim. And also that's also, um, a unique tool of site, I believe. It works not just for searching articles, but also for searching databases or statements or authors, journals, methods, etc. And um, they offer some of their tools um, not, on, not only to researchers, but also to, to publishers, such as journals. So this is an example of a site citation context. So here you see the target article that I've um, searched, which is one of the articles that, that we published. And this here would be the citing article. So this article is citing the target article here. And here you have the citation context. So as you see, it's the sentence that surrounds the citation. Um, and then side also flags the classification you see here. It flags it as supporting evidence. You have also two other flags which are contrasting evidence and then mentioning, which is like side is not sure whether it's supporting or contrasting or maybe it's neither of them. So now I'm gonna show you several videos um, in which you will see me uh, using several tools um, for my research. And um, this is the first one. So this is a general video where I use 
site to search for the citations of one of my articles. So I am um, looking for the article. Here, here it is. So you see it has um, 287 citation statements, um, a lot. And let me see, wait. And now I'm going to show you several things you can do. So you can you can um, look for a particular word, so it will filter the articles that have that word in the citation context. You can also filter, for instance, a specific author. So I am looking for the articles by Bill Young Kim, which is a researcher of my field. So now I have five publications by her that cite my research, my article, which is also really cool. I'm showing, showing you the five articles. Okay. Then uh, with site, you can also, you have a lot of filtering options. So you can filter by sections so you can you can say like i i just want to see the articles that cite my research in the discussion section for instance which i think is super helpful um or in the methods section section for instance and then you will have all of those um papers other filtering options um are the citation types so you might be interested in, in seeing um, only those articles that are supporting your research, for instance, or mentioning your research, or um, giving contrasting evidence, etc. So here I'm showing you all the all the possibilities. And then the unclassified ones. I think that um, they they are articles that are in Spanish, which uh, cite uh, I think that does not uh, flag yet. You can also filter the year. Maybe you are only interested in the recent um, citations, so you can also filter that. You can filter the publication types. Uh, so, for instance, you might want to see the preprints; those articles that have not been published yet, um, or the books, uh, or just the articles. You can also, for instance, exclude your self sites, so your articles. Um, and then you can also, like, cite also uh, finds all the authors that are citing you, which is also a very powerful tool to find for reviewers, for instance, or collaborators, for instance. And then uh, site also finds all the journals that are citing your research, and you can also filter those. Okay. Then you can uh, also order um, the all the citations by all of these um, variables that I just explained you, and then you can also set an alert. I don't know if you're seeing this here. You can also set an alert for when new citations are made for my article. I think I explained this here. Yeah, you can set an alert here. Um, and then you will receive emails when new citations are created. Okay. Then um, another interesting tool um, of site is that you can also, um, if you consider that the classification that site has made the, or that the alg algorithm has made is not um, correct, you can, you can report it. You can suggest a new classification and they will revise it and they will decide if you are right or wrong. So here, for instance, that's what I did. I reported one of the of the, the sites and they sent me this email here and they changed it. So that's super cool that users can also interact with the platform and 
um, report any mistakes that they find, especially with their own work. Another, another tool they have, I think this, this one is new, is the citation statements um, tool. So this is for looking for statements, not just a particular article. So here, for instance, I'm looking for sites that talk about pregnancy and cognitive deficits. And then I am filtering um, those articles that are giving contrasting evidence for that uh, statement in the discussion section, for instance. And uh, I am making sure that there are no preprints. So this is a really powerful tool to, that gives you an idea, a really accurate idea of what um, researchers are saying about a specific statement. Um, and then they also have this editorial notice here. So you, you can, you can see if, if, if some of, the, of these papers have been retracted or reported or those kind of things. Then side also allows you to create the dashboards to evaluate how a group of papers that you're interested in have been cited. So here, for instance, wait. Here, for instance, I am looking for papers that talk about pregnancy brain changes, which is my research field. And then I am filtering a bit um, the search because I think that the dashboards only, only uh, can include up to 1000 statements. So I am, I am filtering the search a little bit um, with the year range, that's it. And then I create the dashboard and it takes a while and here I have it. So this is really cool because then site gives you, calculates the site index, which is an index that takes into account the, the supporting sites and the contrasting sites. So it's a new way of, um, it's, it's a new citation index. Normally, the citation in the indexes only take into account the amount of, uh, of sites, just the quantity. And uh, site tries to ponderate this um, traditional uh, index uh, with uh, those sites that are giving actually contrasting evidence. So I think that's really important. Um, and it's a key feature of side. Um, what else? So here, for instance, you can see that the site index of this topic has uh, decreased during the last years. So that would mean that uh, regarding pregnancy brain changes, nowadays, the literature is more like um, it's, it's, it's full of contradictions like uh, papers that are um, reporting um, contrasting evidence to other papers. And, and, and it also gives you this dashboard, um, a list of all the authors that have published an article related to this topic. So this is also a really powerful tool, again, to find reviewers or potential collaborators for your research. What else? Um, yeah, wait. Yeah, so here you have all the articles and then you can also set an alert for this topic and you will receive emails whenever papers are published in this topic. And then you can also create a dashboard for, for an author, for yourself, for instance. So here I am creating, I am looking for my name and uh, these are all my papers. And then I could export the results if I wanted, but here I am creating the dashboard. Um, 
So ideally, this dashboard would calculate my site index, but it doesn't because I have less than 100 sites. So once I will reach 100 sites, uh, site will calculate my citation index. But this is also a really interesting tool to have your work to in, like to to have an idea of what everyone is saying about your work and to know all your co-authors, for instance. And then here on the right, um, I show you that you can also create a custom dashboard of a group of papers that you're interested in. You can import it directly from your Sotero library or Mendeley library, which are both citation managers. Um, but you can also just paste the DOIs here manually. So it's the only condition you need to create a dashboard. You have to have the DOIs of the articles. This one is a really powerful tool. It's called the reference check. And basically what it does is checking all the references of a document you are writing. So it can be a published article, but it can be also a preprint. It can be um, a grant you are preparing or an article that you are preparing, but you haven't submitted yet to the journal. Uh, I think this is one of my favorite tools, um, really, really necessary for, for research. So here, what I've done is I've uploaded to the reference check one document, one article that I wrote, but it, it hasn't been published yet. So it was just a Word document. And it had all the references introduced with Sotero. That was my case, but I think it would work the same way with Mendeley or other citation man, man, managers. So it detects all the references that I've used. And again, it gives me all these filtering options. It also gives me the information whether some of these uh, articles are preprints, which maybe I've, um, I've, I've missed. And then it gives me a list of all the authors, which again is really, uh, it's a really nice way to, to find potential reviewers, which submissions always ask us for uh, to suggest the reviewers. Um, so this one is a very powerful tool. And then here I can I can order the, the all the citations. I can order by the most cited, the, the most supported, the most con con um, contrasted. Okay. What else? So this one is the visualization report, another useful tool. So this is basically the same, but you might want to visualize it in a different way. So here side is giving you um, all the citations of a particular article. So here I'm saying like, show me every, every article, like not only the ones that uh, are giving supporting or contrasting evidence, but every article that is citing my research. And here I'm changing the layout to a hierarchical one. So, and I'm zooming in a little bit. So these ones, these papers are the ones that are citing the target article. And then the ones below are the ones that my article is citing. So this is also a nice tool. Then Side has several interesting plugins that you can install in your computer. The first one that I find interesting is the one with Sotero because it's the reference manager that I always use. Um, so when you install the plugin, which is really easy, um, 
and you have well here I have all the articles um, that I that I that that are useful for my research, and then the plugin uh, adds these columns here, and then if you if you double click any of the papers, you can view the site report directly. Then you can also install a browser plugin, and then you will see these widgets here in PubMed, in Google Scholar here, in the archive here, and uh, And then you can also design your your own bots if you if you'd want, and you can um, put it in a website, for instance. Um, you can change it a little bit, show the type levels. So I think this one is a it's cool that you can customize your your batch. What else? Then the, the, the browser plugin also allows you to search for a citation statement by highlighting the term and then clicking the search site statement. So when you are looking for a statement, maybe you are reading something on the internet and you want to know if that particular statement is true and site allows it. So in general, I think that site supports your research critical thinking and it assists your citing and writing as a researcher. Um, and specifically, I, I, I think that it gives you um, accurate information about citations, which is something that before I was not getting from any platform. And then it's really useful to stay up to date with literature when you're creating these dashboards with topics and set alerts for them. Um, also, it allows you to check the sites of your articles before submission with the reference check tool. Then also it creates this new citation index that considers not only the amount of citations, but also the supporting or contrasting, like it also waits for the supporting or contrasting evidence. And they offer a lot of discounts and free trials to, to academia, which I think is, um, is, really, is really nice. And one last thing that I like is that they allow you to report issues and to suggest anything you, you might find um interesting they have this slack channel that you can join and uh, as, I, as i said they they allow you to flag um citations if you think they are not uh, classified correctly so in general you can keep track of what researchers are saying about your work and other work you're interested in you can also suggest changes. You can validate the sites you are using. And you can evaluate authors and journals with a more nuanced citation index. So I've thought about four scenarios when site is useful in my research. The first one is maybe you want to know how people are citing your work. So you can check your author profile by creating a dashboard of your profile. Maybe you are writing an article or a grant and you want to double check that the references you have used are well supported, have not had editorial notices, are not preprints. So you can do that by using the reference check. You can also, uh, you might be reading an article online and you want to quickly inspect that the sites that they are using are well supported or maybe they are contrasted. So you can do that by installing the browser plugin. And maybe 
you want to check how a particular statement has been supported or contrasted in the, in the literature, for instance, the one that I was talking about before, the cognitive deficit students during pregnancy, and you can check it using the citation statement tool. And then I've, I've also detected several limitations, but I think that it will improve uh, with time as more um, users engage with the platform. So the classification of citations, citations are sometimes incorrect, but you can flag them. Um, then the citation context is not available for every paper. I think that's because um, site does not have the DOI for every paper. So without the DOI, they can't um, get the citation context. Then I've realized that the dashboards only admit up to 1,000 uh, 1, citations, and uh, they only detect English uh, for flagging classifications. So for instance, um, I also check a lot of articles in Spanish and I, can, I cannot uh, check them with site. And then I realized that site does not distinguish between a review paper, an opinion paper, a research article. I think that would be nice. They are all flagged as articles for now. And then here I'm showing you the original paper where they explain the, the tool um, and they explain how they do the classifications better in case you are interested. And that's it. Thank Great. you for listening. Thank you so much for that. Um, and I feel like there's already been some improvements to some of the limitations. So we have more citation statements and we did just add better types now. So it's not, it was previously just article or review and now you mm. can get more granular. Uh, and so that's pretty recent. And that comes from listening to, you know, various users, uh, specifically at hospitals, mm -hmm. wanting to see if they could look at practice guidelines. And so we have added some of that. Um, so if anyone has any questions, please feel free to uh, write them in the chat, raise your hand, uh, or I think there's even a Q&A feature um, and we can answer them. I guess I can start with uh, one question myself is, how have you found it uh, working with, with your, your PI or collaborators? You know, is there a, an issue? Do people understand it? Or, or is there one feature that you like to, to use best for, for working with someone? When I introduced the platform to my PI, she found really interesting the reference check tool. Like that was something that really, really impressed her. Um, yeah, I would say that I I haven't been using the tool with with collaborators yet. Yeah, okay. I, I am I am still like learning how to use it for my own research. Okay, looks like we have uh, one question, so I'll, I'll allow them to talk. Go ahead. Should be able to ask. Hi, Josh. Hi, Magdalena. Can you hear me? Yeah. Well, thank you very much for introducing this powerful tool. Um, I have a general, general question, more technical one. So when one reads papers, sometimes, especially for a complex one, even if you read the whole abstract, sometimes you cannot say straightforward, okay, this is supporting one theory or the other one. So how does the, the algorithm recognize this huge amount of information makes such a smart decision to decide whether it's supporting or not supporting? Is it reliable or how does that work? That's fascinating. Yeah. So do you want me to answer that one? Yeah, I think yeah. So. <laughs> so, so, so there are limitations, right? There can be a paper that contrasts a paper that we may not pick up. What we are doing is looking specifically at that citation statement. So those three sentences that uh, she just showed um, and then looking at the language in that. And so the way that we developed that was to, as, as researchers, so members of this team with, with PhDs or MDs, read roughly 40,000 different citation statements from a variety of different disciplines, biomedical literature, social sciences, et cetera. 
we read these independently, blindly, and said, okay, are these authors citing this paper and indicating that they support it with evidence or citing this paper and indicating that they contrast it with evidence? Um, and in general, there was pretty good agreement amongst annotators. Uh, and so that was one indication that, you know, you could read these citation statements and, and indicate kind of the intent of why the author was citing it. Um, that information has gone into training this, this deep learning model that takes into account the language from those annotated citation statements, the location of where they appear. So supporting or contrasting sites are very rare in introductions, for, for example. They're much more common in discussion or results section. Um, but it can miss this information because you could contrast another paper uh, very far away from where you actually cite that paper, and, and then it wouldn't capture that information. Um, and so it's, it's intended to you know, be a filter or a guide along with searching these things. Um, and, and there are certainly limitations. And so I think you know, the, the important thing is that you can read these, these citation statements and make your own assessment. So it's not just, this is a supporting paper, trust us. It's this is a supporting paper, here's how it's been used. And you can, uh, you can also flag that. And so we get a, a handful of you know, people suggesting changes a day um, and, and they, I, they feel like they're getting better. Uh, because it is very complex, right? It, it's really hard for a machine to look at a sentence and say, okay, these authors are citing it. Um, and so hopefully that, that answers the question, but also the paper that Magdalena shared at the end talks about that in a lot of detail and we'll get the precision scores, the recall scores. Uh, and in general, we're a bit more conservative. So we'd rather it really be a contrasting citation um, and then, uh, then, then it not. Uh, and so we might miss some that are, are classified as, as mentioning. And then of course, mentioning also could be 20 other different reasons for, for citing. And so I think the primary value is the context. And then we provide various ways of searching, filtering by sections is another one where there's no advanced machine learning, but you know, filtering a method section versus an introduction versus a discussion gives you very different types of citations. Um, one other thing I, I can say is, uh, a paper can cite another paper three different times, right? It can cite it in introduction, it can cite it in discussion, um, and we capture those citation statements. And so that is also something that I think we're working on a little bit to look at is like, what are papers that have just generally been cited once in the introduction versus papers that have been cited five times in the discussion? So kind of an engaged versus passive discussion uh, citations uh, is something that we're currently looking at internally. Um, but ultimately, yeah, it, it's kind of like we're trying to show this conversation happening amongst the papers uh, and, and help users uh, get through that. It was a great question. Thank you very much for the extensive answer. Thank you very much. I'm going to recommend this actually to our department during the week and uh, looking forward to results. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, we do uh, offer free trials to departments, universities, um, and then you can sign up for free and, and you know test it out without any commitment as well. So thanks so much. Okay, we have a Q&A. So here is a, so someone was just asking if it's possible to get the presentation. So yes, we will have this recorded and we'll, we can share this with attendees afterwards. Um, there is also various videos. If you go to site uh, or search site on YouTube, we've made some short videos, two minutes long for each of these features. Uh, some that I think you, you presented here. Uh, and so those are those are also ones, and there's previous webinars uh, also up on our YouTube channel. Any other questions or feedback uh, is also welcome. No. Okay. Well, then, if there's nothing else. Uh, I would say thank you once again for the presentation and the, the very thorough overview. Uh, it's really nice to, to, to see this um, and, and to kind of see the perspective on how people use it. Uh, I learned some things, certainly. Uh, and so we're, we're very happy to, to listen to users. And, and um, uh, yeah, thanks once again. Oh, here's one more question. I sometimes have issues with errata. Um, so I don't know if this is a question or more of a comment, um, but maybe this relates to our notices. Uh, we do show, you know, retractions errata, and we get that from PubMed as, as well as Crossref. Um, and 
publishers are not very good sometimes at, at this. And so we will say this paper is retracting. You'll go to the publisher page and it won't be immediately apparent. I actually think that's a real benefit of our plugin uh, is seeing a retracted paper when it's not obvious that it's been retracted. Um, and so, yeah, that's another. Okay, thanks so much, um, Magdalena, and, and thanks everyone for attending. And uh, I'll share the link uh, soon. Okay, thank okay. you very much. Cheers, everyone.